let's not screw around because damn, GeForce GTX 1080 and 1070 just made the Titan X and 980 chumps. Brad actually has one. I do right here. I just got back from Austin actually, and my Wait, forehead it's is still in the peeling. box. You didn't unbox <laughs> it? Yeah, what the hell? Oh, I, yeah, well, that's I, I empty, man. It. You bought that from a guy in the in the. <laughs> At the inve- in the in the parking lot, it's like, hey man, I'll sell you a 1080, five hundred dollars. Oh, Brad, there oh, it is. still in the shrink oh. wrap, still bagged. Come on, come Brad. on, man, break it out. So what? what <laughs> so we're we're in a little bit of a weird spot because obviously Nvidia had their massive. I'm trying to keep it family safe. Here, had their massive event on Friday. We it's do so know shiny. a lot of details. Holy, so what? Now, Brad actually knows secret things and not secret things. So we are going to play a game with Brad and try to get as much secret stuff out of Brad to get him sued. They won't sue our company. NVIDIA will sue Brad personally, I think. Come Perfect. on, man. I signed papers and stuff. He, he signed the papers. But they don't know he used a false name. He used Adam <laughs> Patrick Murray. They're like, oh, who's this guy? Oh, man. What a jerk. So, Brad, so what's hey. what's the deal on 1080? What's the, what's the quick dump? Badass? Uh, badass, yeah. Is for the next month, you should definitely not buy any, you know, GeForce cards or anything. Because when this stuff comes out at the end of the month, it'll... Everyone who bought a 980 Ti recently is just crying, crying, crying. Which, Hayden, you are actually running a 980 Ti. Uh, are you yeah, crying I am. now? Uh, I'm not crying, but I am feeling pretty jealous at the moment. <laughs> so, you know, that, you know, it's funny because whenever there's a new video card and then everybody gets excited, you know, obviously we're excited. That's why I'm screaming so much. You always get the, well, my 980 is still fine. It's not obsolete. Well, you guys just need to shut up, right? So you, well, I just get card envy. Like get, I, don't, my 980 Ti is still maxing out every single game that I play on it. So yeah, I don't, it still kicks it's, plenty ass. Yeah, it's not like I actually would need an upgrade, but the fact that there is something newer out there makes me want to upgrade, even though you know I don't have to, and it's not rational. So those people who have the 980 Ti or they shouldn't feel bad, really. No, no, not at all. I mean, <laughs> that long guy. pause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, "Yeah, I wouldn't." Well, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. It's all right, Timmy. It's it's. You I mean, tried. the worst is the worst is if you bought like a 980 Ti last week. Yeah, that was. You, could you imagine, yeah. like, if you actually just bought a card and you're like, "Where's the receipt? Where's the receipt?" I, I, I think EVGA I does just bought a, two of those. And he's oh, badly no. hoping EVGA has an upgrade program. Yeah, EVGA has an upgrade program normally, so <laughs> so they should. If you bought from them, you're covered. But uh, anybody that bought just a random 980 Ti in the last week or two is uh Although they could, I mean, a, a week or two, they'd be all yeah, right. Yeah, you could you could probably send it back. It, it would be like that. You know, you would you bought your card 30 days ago, and then of course. They announce it on Friday, the 1080, 1070 card. Well, something to keep in mind when you're when you're looking at all the headlines, including ours, and all the stuff they're putting out, where they're like, oh, yeah, the uh, GTX 1080 is faster than two 980s and SLI and faster than Titan X and all that jazz. It probably is faster than a Titan X, but they cherry-picked those numbers. Like, if you go to the GeForce GTX 1080 website on NVIDIA, geforce.com right now, and you look at the numbers that they have, it's it's better than two 980s. In virtual reality, ah, mm. if you look at like Rise of the Tomb Raider performance and Witcher Three performance, it's one point five to one point seven times greater than a uh, GTX nine eighty, which is still crazy. That's plenty crazy, right? But you know, they cherry pick those numbers a bit, and that's that's for the ten eighty, right? So there's two cards for people that know ten eighty yes. six hundred dollars, I guess maybe yeah six six fifty ish area. It sounds like uh, the, the ten eighty, yeah, it's uh, six hundred uh, MSRP. But the Founders Edition, uh, what NVIDIA calls the Founders Edition, which is basically a reference card, is uh, seven hundred dollars. So, you know that, that that's the weird thing is a uh, um, reference cards have always been the cheapest. Yeah, right? reference cards are usually the the crappy ones. So, so what what's up yeah. with that? So like, so they're actually going to make the reference card more expensive, and then the uh yeah, I guess in the you know if you've ever held or ever seen uh, NVIDIA reference card, they're actually you know pretty badass. They have like right. nice aluminum shrouds. They're yeah. you know yeah. Nice I'm just talking about the the uh, the heatsink and stuff on those. Is like the 980 Ti the reference card runs like 20 degrees hotter than the EVGA overclocked reference card because their their cooler is a thousand times better. Uh, so yeah, I, I would I would not buy a 980 Ti reference card. And if it was a hundred bucks more, right? So I, I guess the one I'm wondering is if this this Founders Edition, somebody watches a lot of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, must actually be 
better than like sort of the reference cards have always sort of been the baseline. It sounds like they're actually pinning it a little nope. higher this time. These no? are, if you take reference card from previous generations and replace yeah. it with Founders Edition for this one, that's what you get. It doesn't have any specially clocked. Weird. Uh, G, uh, you know, it's not binned to get higher performance. It doesn't have any overclocks. It's you're getting the NVIDIA version with that fancy cooler on it. Weird. Hmm. That's the uh, only one, if you look at their press releases, that they guarantee absolutely will be out on uh, May 27th. So Right, and that's, that's pretty typical, right? Because for people who don't know, NVIDIA actually manufactures these cards and distributes them through partners, basically. And then all the, yep. the other dudes, Asus, Gigabyte, AVGA, they, they do their custom designs, and those are the ones where they get sort of crazy with the cooling. I, I wonder if they're also, uh, if they priced it higher because most of those reference cards end up, end up going into... Uh, like display cases. Like when you go to when you go to trade shows, nobody's running like EVGA uh, 980 Ti's and stuff like that. They're always running reference cards for the most part. Uh, hmm. And maybe maybe they're counting on that aspect of it. Just um, like a branding thing. Yeah, I don't think they would because I feel like most of those cards are probably given for free. But I feel like whenever <laughs> like when we walk around E3 and stuff, all those PCs are just running like straight Nvidia cards, not oh. not. EVGA branded NVIDIA cards. Well, I mean, uh, they. Uh, I talked to the NVIDIA people, and they said specifically, whereas before reference cards, you know, they introduced those to the channel to try to kickstart things. These founders editions, they're looking to manufacture and sell for the life of the card. So they're, this isn't just to kickstart stuff. This is keeping going, keeping going, keeping going. And if they priced it too aggressively, uh, that would not leave people like EVGA and ASUS and everybody room to, you know, make their own cards with cheaper versions if they sold this at MSRP. Why would you buy the EVGA thing with a plastic shroud at mm-hmm. MSRP when you can get this for MSRP? Yeah, but I it just that's just for somebody going to buy it, you kind of like, I'm just used to like reference card being, okay, that's sort of like yeah. the, the sort of gold standard generally. And then the aftermarket cards being way better, costing yep. more. So are we going to see basically cards above that price sort of like this whole like six hundred dollar thing is not realistic because who's going to sell it for under right they're going to make you know some super duper four fan gpu and it'll sell for eight hundred dollars instead well all the partners are competing against each other so i wouldn't be surprised to see some cards coming out right around the six hundred dollar msrp yeah i just expect Uh, like evga is always uh like 30 bucks more expensive normally Uh, like i think a 980 ti from evga is like 30 bucks more expensive than everybody else so i would I would wonder if they're going to price in around like seven fifty. Uh, well, so I that think you can get some well, ma- maximum like overclock. The MSRP is six hundred bucks, and this is seven hundred bucks. The Founders Edition. I think they purposefully priced it that high so that they're not just screwing their partners. Right. So everybody has sort of room to sell it for. It's like they really don't want to sell them almost in any kind of way. You know, just sort of get them out there. You can buy it if you want the the pretty Nvidia package, but you know, please buy our partners. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, and then that way, you know, like these system builders, they can certify this and know it'll be there for the full lifetime of the thing and everything. So that's rather generous of Nvidia. I, uh, frankly, corporations generally aren't that generous, and frankly, Nvidia hasn't always been that generous. In the past. <laughs> Their board partners have never always been happy with the way they do things. So I, yep. I'm really shocked, honestly. Uh, but I want to get a little bit more about the performance. So, of course, I was watching the live stream with you know fifty thousand other people brad was actually down in austin where they held the event i, I got excited i thought they said this thing was 2x so not, uh, 1080 was twice as twice the performance of uh, of a titan x and then the 1070 is basically the performance of a titan x was that really all in relations to to vr or just general that's, gaming? that's not quite what they said they said that uh the 1080 was twice the performance of 980 sli Oh, right. right. Okay. So that's, well, those, those are super powerful. That's not anywhere near as powerful as Titan X SLI. <laughs> right. But I mean, uh, but the, yeah, it's not quite, but okay. So it's not really 2X performance. Uh, no, like I said, if you go to their, they always cherry pick these things. If you go to their website and look at the numbers that they have, the only thing over 2X performance on the, uh, versus the 980 is in virtual reality. If you look at the actual games, Rise of the Tomb Raider and DirectX 12 and Witcher 3 and Wild Hunt. I have it here right now. Uh, the imp- the performance looks to be 1.5 to 1.7 or so higher. And, and what does the 1070 look like? Because that to me, I mean, the 980 is, is great and the 1080 will be great, but the that 970 has been the sweet spot for everybody that's building a system. Uh, what does that 1070 clock in at? 
That's crazy. They didn't talk too much about it, uh, actually. They were focusing mostly on the GTX 1080. Uh, but the 1070, they said, would also faster than a Titan X, which is just nuts. Um, and we're talking actual 4 gig VRAM this time, right? We're not recreating <laughs> yes. the, the 3.5.5 <laughs> gig disaster of 2015. I, oh, my God. That was I, would, I would entirely hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Although that was, that was blown out of proportion. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like, that 970 though. was still a hell of a card, but, man, I, oh, yeah. I don't want to see even, that again. Even right. after all that came out, I'm like, wow, that sucks, but I'd still, you know, it still gets the frame rates that we saw, and I'd still totally recommend this card, even yeah, though it absolutely. has that never. Right, and for but, people who don't know, yeah, that was... Said, oh, I'm just going to fill people in who don't know, so that, that was the famous GTX 970. Awesome card. Everybody lost their mind. Great performance for not much money. And then about three months afterwards, somebody found a flaw where certain certain games at certain resolutions, the memory bandwidth killed itself. Yeah, it was basically, it's it was advertised as a four gig card and three and a half gig of that was, was high bandwidth memory. And then half a gig of it was just garbage memory. Right. But uh-huh. like the amount of people that ran into that was such a small number. And the amount of games that had the problem with that was such a small number. That really was not a huge deal, probably. Right. But, but everybody, the internet freaked yeah, everybody out. Everybody freaked out. But the crazy thing was, I don't know if Nvidia did it, or I know I I definitely remember the vendors were like, "Hey, we'll we'll give you your money back," which is like unprecedented, you <laughs> know. So, but not well, and it didn't matter because the nine seventy is now. I mean, it's still the the best selling card, so they yes. yeah. clearly That's didn't dent the sales that much. Yeah, people were silly to return those. But yeah, and it, it, they were saying it's faster than a Titan X at the show, the 1070. But yeah, uh, again, they didn't show, they don't have a breakdown of that on their website, so we don't know what they're comparing that to. That could very well be in virtual reality as well. So who knows? But it sounds like it's going to be utter badass no matter what. And right. that's coming in right around that that same price point, right? Like three, three hundred, uh, fifty dollars higher. Fifty dollars uh, higher. Uh, the nine seventy came out at three right? thirty. Yeah, oh. this is three eighty for the MSRP. Or if you want mm. the Founders Edition card, it's uh, four fifty. But still, they're saying Titan X performance. Yeah, yes, pretty crazy. Eighty bucks. That's insane. And then is which it is eight, crazy. Was it, is it eight gigs or mic. four gigs? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, eight gigs. Oh, wow. Eight gigs. So it's not four. Wow. So they, they give you the same amount of memory. And of course, it's GDDR5X, which is um, anybody disappointed? It's uh, not HBM2, high bandwidth memory, which is all the you know badass stuff AMD has been using for the 35 cards they sold last year. I'm not, I'm not disappointed at all. It makes total sense because the first generation of HBM, which is in the Fury lineup, is uh, the first generation is limited to four gigabyte capacity. And if you're moving pixels like this, man, you probably want higher than that, especially for the future. And even AMD's next generation HBM equipped cards aren't coming out till the end of the year. And I don't think anybody wants to wait till the end of the year to see, you know, all this ridiculous technology advancements and graphics cards. So, so I'll say one thing I was surprised by, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this still has only one HDMI out on the back. Is that correct? Oh, uh, let's see. Yes, only yeah. one HDMI so, out. So yeah. Gordon and I talked about this recently um, because with like all these companies are pushing VR and all these VR headsets need HDMI ports and all of these cards still have just the one HDMI out. Uh, and it's a <sighs> it's a huge pain in the ass. Uh, I have to, I mean, the amount of people that this would affect is, <laughs> is basically nil. Uh, but like I have a, a Vive and an Oculus at, ho- at home and... Uh, I have to swap between them and I have to like unplug the HDMI port every time. Mm. And man, what a frustrating thing to have to change those HDMI ports out. Uh, when like, why, That's, like it's, why don't we have two HDMI ports? Well, and especially on, when on they're saying cards. they're building these for VR. Yeah, exactly. That's, like, yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah. Although I got to say, well, I think that's not, that's not a 1% problem. That's a 0.1%. No, exactly. Problem. It's, it's <laughs> not even a, a come on, let us complain. <laughs> but like, I mean, a lot of people run, uh, run multi, multi monitor setups and, and yeah. instead of daisy chaining, like why, why not just run multiple HDMI outs and stuff like that? Uh, it just seems like a very strange thing in 2016 to still be dealing with with one HDMI port and then like five Display Port ports, which like yeah, I've never used. They, they still have DVI as well. Yep. They still have DVI right. on the back of this thing. You'd think you know an extra HDMI port in the back would be. I mean, I mean that's the know, thing is I end up running just, HDMI uh, to the the Oculus and stuff, and then running DVI to my monitor because I'm, I can't. I don't want to fuck with putting monitor HDMI in. So, so Hayden, let me ask you a question to play devil's avo- avocado here. Why does... Ooh, yum. Why, devil's why does, avocado. That sounds devil's good. Avocado. 30 Rock <laughs> reference there. Why does? Why do you blame AMD and NVIDIA for doing this? 
why aren't Oculus and and uh, HTC putting DisplayPort on well, their so, headsets? So the Vive does. The Vive has a DisplayPort uh, out on the back. Um, Mini but, DisplayPort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I. Uh, I it seems weird that, uh-huh. that we that we're not using DisplayPort, but at the same time, like these standards, uh, you know, the the Vive and the Oculus kit has been known for a long time, and uh, yeah, with, with with AMD and Nvidia saying, oh, we're supporting VR, we're putting all this, these resources into developing good VR tech. It's very strange to me to then release a card that is is a huge pain in the ass for VR users. Sure. And, and as Brad said, this is like a very small percentage of their user base that would ever have this problem. But yeah. like it still seems like a very strange just just the principle of it is very strange to me when they're out there saying in public that they support this technology. Yeah, that's true. And you know, remember that 980 who's it, with the EVGA did the card that had a a front Yeah, the that's front really bay. smart. A front bay that had HDMI adapter. So um, you could just plug your VR headset into the front of your case instead of plugging it in the back all the time, which is a pain, right? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I have to I have to climb under my desk. Luckily, I have that sit stand desk now, oh, so yeah. I I put that standing all the way up. <laughs> and I climb Man, underneath. I just came up with the ultimate case idea because I, I don't understand why nobody's done it. I'm going to give it for free to case vendors. Let's just make a case where it's just backwards, right? So you put all the drive bays, all the front bay ports on the back of it. And you just run the whole thing backwards so you can plug everything in. Because you always go into the back of it all the time. You unplug your headset by accident. Why don't you just make it backwards? Everything's backwards. There's no... I mean, I, so like the one well, thing when Alienware made that, that dumb, the triangle case, yeah. uh, the one thing that I really liked was all the ports were like on the top triangle. So you at least didn't have to like climb all the way That's to the true. wall. Uh, otherwise, that case was, was really silly looking. But Yeah, but you know, people got excited over it, but... I'm, that's it. Case vendors, give me a cut. 5%. Make that case. <laughs> Only 5 Wouldn't you love that, though? You would not have to turn the damn case around. Everything needs to be plugged in. Front, well, yeah, head, EV, everything. EVGA had that uh, case that they showed off at CES where all the stuff was on the side, so you could turn it sideways and yeah, show off your nice. uh, you know, fancy graphics cards and stuff. And then yeah. it has you know, all the different controls in the front, all the ports. Yeah, not but HDMI, this, but this, the rest. There's only... It's just everything. It's just the back... It's called the back case. Everything. <laughs> on, there's no side. No, none of that top stuff. None of that... Plug the cables in, have them stick out. It's just everything right in the back of the case. I mean, first I would like to just figure out how to, to wrangle all the cables I have in my house, and then after that we can talk about putting them all in the front of the case. <laughs> yeah, just, it makes <laughs> it oh, easier. Oh, you do what I do, man. I just threw all the cables in the back and then turned my case sideways so you can't <laughs> see those things. Yeah. I kick mine all the time because my outlet is like right uh, right under my desk, and so the, the, the thing that I'm plugging them all into, the power strip, is like right where my feet go. And I, uh, I accidentally turned off my computer a couple of weeks ago because I kicked Ooh. the switch yeah. on, the, on yeah. the power supply. You got a you got a duct tape over the. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a sad moment. So yeah. it's uh, hard. Like I when my, my kids were really little, they'd come into the room and they'd hit the the power button on the UPS, Ooh. which would shut it off. Because <laughs> it's like it's a bright red, you know, and they push the button. You're like, I can't. <laughs> yell at you. Yeah, you're too cute. Hey, hey, Brad, get back. Getting back to the 1080 1070 a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the ports they they are so they are HDMI 2.0 B and then Display yes. Port 1.4 I, F or Z I don't know I can't even keep track but does that Something mean like that. they yeah. support FreeSync or can you wait first if you can't answer the question because you are under oath not to talk about it just don't say anything just blink I, can you yeah just blink one blink is yes two blinks <laughs> no but so is. Do that, does that mean they support FreeSync and G-Sync now, finally? I, I don't know No comment. No I comment. don't know. He's not I saying. I would highly doubt that it supports FreeSync. Because <laughs> that just seems like, how do you not support FreeSync in the standard, right? Because if you're DisplayPort 1.4, that means you should support all the previous parts of it, right? DisplayPort 1. Well, FreeSync is like this little offshoot, right. uh, like a supplementary standard, right? So that doesn't mean they necessarily have to support it. I guess, <laughs> but yeah, we didn't get we didn't they didn't get into that too much. So no. I don't have a yes and, no. And or Nvidia two didn't links talk about these free sync technology saying. on stage in Austin. That's very strange to me. I can't <laughs> believe it. Did, so I have another question about the the ten eighty ten seventy. Can you talk about power requirements? Because I mean, these are insanely low power, right? Yeah, it's actually it's pretty nuts. It's uh, one hundred and eighty watts, 
so not very much at all. That's actually a little bit more than what the 980 came out at. That came out at uh, uh, 165 watts. But uh, still, considering the fact that they're saying this comes with the power of two 980s and SLI or more than a Titan X or whatever, it's insane how little power this thing used. Just a single 8-pin power connector. Wow. So, and that's a 1080. Do you yeah, have a 1080. Wow. Well, you just proved it. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Damn. So I, uh, I kind of what, what are they saying minimum power supply specs? Because I mean it's interesting. You could almost save the money from buying a, a lower a lower end PSU, and, and is it enough to offset the price of a 1080 versus a 1070? Almost, you know. Let's see here. I'm looking at their website right now, and recommended power system power minimum is 500 watts. Wow, that's really low. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's yeah. Crazy. So if you don't have to buy, I mean, previously everybody's like 750, 800 watt PSU might be 120, 140 maybe, depending on how yeah. high up you go in quality. So yeah, I think I'm Nvidia's- running overkill at this point. I think I have like a, a thousand watts in there, just future. In my that. in my personal system, like I have a crazy power supply in the PC world graphics card, you know, system because I put two or three GPUs in there all the time. But my personal system only has a 650 watt. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's Power what I used to run. And it runs 980 Ti overclock, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it, I, it's been crazy for a while. So that means you could probably, I mean, if they're saying 500 watts, that's probably being conservative. You could almost yeah. like run on a 300 watt power supply back to 1997 <laughs> the, or something. Well, but 500 like you, watts is the don't sue us when you number. Well, you know, and like you up. told me the other day, why, why it's, you know, cheap out on a power supply? Because everybody yeah, does, right? power supplies are pretty cheap at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, even, like you're not even, saving that much I th- money. I think I, think I bought a, a thousand watt gold for 150 or something like that. Which, oh, yeah, that's not bad. In the grand scheme of the case build, is not much at all. Well, and like you said, it's, it's not enough to off offset the cost of oh hey, do I get a 970 or or I'm sorry, a 1070 or 1080? Right. Like, it's you're so not you saving. might save save 50 bucks. That's not yeah, enough probably. to get you that. I was just thinking, man, it's like if you can get down to like a 12 dollar power supply, which is what people buy yeah. these days, then you're like. <laughs> There's my there's my 1080 card. It's bad. Don't do that. Yeah, you, Buy a nice power supply. Uh, yes. What, what what else can we ask about 1080? I just have so many questions. Oh, you know, I read this morning. I don't I don't know if you know, but I heard they dumped uh, D sub VGA support. Is that yes. true? Yes. Well, uh, the DVI port is uh, DVI D, not DVI I. So yes. What's Rip. the rationale for that? Just. Uh. I mean, VGA's been a dying port for a while. I mean, AMD's even moved past DVI. Uh, the reference AMD cards don't have uh, DVI ports even. So, what if it's? Uh, yeah, that's true. AMD <laughs> dumped it too, right? So, but you know, if I'm a I'm a competitive gamer. Yeah, I, I, I like not DVI. really I'm lying. You run your CRT. How am I going to run my CRT now? You gonna- <laughs> yeah, right. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, DVI support in like maybe the lower end cards because I think a lot of the people who are using VGA at this point are like business users, use it for projectors or use it right. for you know old CRT monitors, and that makes more sense for a lower price card. But I don't think very many people buying a GTX 1080 are all that interested in VGA support. Yeah, but I think that the, it shouldn't be a problem for most people. But the screwy thing is if you go out and buy your $150 panel, it's going to come with a VGA cable. It won't come with HDMI. Well, some of them come with HDMI, but most of them are going to come with VGA. Uh, some of them are starting. DVI. Some of them come with, yeah, DVI at this point, though. Uh, yeah. I think I think most of the monitors I've bought in the, in the last f- four years have come with a DVI cable. And so. then you don't even get the adapter anymore, right? So since it doesn't work, the no, it idea. doesn't. Yeah, right. it would be pointless. Hmm. Okay. So I'm looking over this great article on PC World. The uh, <laughs> ten key things you need to know. Oh. Oh, great hey, who article. Wrote that? Man, I don't know, Brad uh, K- Chaos. Let me I go. Think. <laughs> it, yeah, something like that. Uh, have you tried Ansel number seven? Ansel. On that yes, list. Oh. that was awesome. Actually, Ansel. Just to explain it for a minute, is a new uh, technology. That is supported by Pascal GPUs, which is uh, the GPU at the heart of the 1080 and the 1070. And it's like, uh, they call it a 3D in-game camera system. It's basically like a screenshot supercharged. Um, Developers have to explicitly support it. But when they do, um, you can like pause the game and enter free camera mode and go wandering around the game and then take a screenshot. And then you have all these different sorts of uh, video filters. You have different sorts of, you can tilt the camera, you can just... Do all kinds of crazy stuff to it. And you can even jack the resolution up to like, 
I think I went in the witness. I went to 61,000 pixels wide or something like that. Even if the game doesn't support it, it's super high res. It's just like a crazy screenshots, amazing thing. Don't the textures fall apart for that kind of high res, though? I mean, I just no, imagine that- it would look like crap. No, it didn't look like crap at all. It looks great. They said uh, even if the games don't support it, they can get in there deep with the Pascal. And it uses, I believe, hardware. I'm not sure. Uh, but in any case, it's supported by the 1080. And it, it looked great. It looked amazing. But uh, the problem with it is if you zoom out to that super high res resolution, which I, of course, did, is when you try to uh, you know, take the picture, it stitches it all together. And uh, it can take minutes oh, oh wow <laughs> minutes, how minutes, big is that how big is that it, jpeg uh there are several gigabytes one of them <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's in in in-game gigapixel photography kind of cool yeah well yes. they, they were yes, saying in, it's in aimed the, at like uh, in one of the uh examples they had the witcher 3 the intro area the keep uh zoomed out real far the castle where you train in the beginning and everything and you take a picture and then they were able to zoom in on the words in a book inside one of the rooms in a window in that picture and it looked clear as day. Wow. Yeah, they yes. were saying it's for like the, the people that mod Skyrim to hell and then take really pretty pictures and hmm. stuff. Uh, Can, so I assume they don't care as much about the fact that it takes 12 minutes or whatever to <laughs> render out. Yeah, it's free. I thought it was freaking out at first because I was trying the demo. And when you hit the thing, it stitches it all together and the camera just like freaks out and <laughs> flickers and zooms all over the place. But another cool thing about it is that it also supports uh, VR headsets. So you can take this picture, it makes a 360-degree bubble, and then you can look around in your Vive or your Google Cardboard or whatever. Oh, 3D? So- Go ahead. Is it, is it 2D or 3D? 2D. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, it's a picture. It is tiled then. So they're not just – I sort of thought they just sort of super sample it or some kind of like take an image at whatever, 65 megapixels, but it's actually – they're just tiling the whole scene together to make a giant high-resolution image then. I'm not sure if uh, they went into the details, but okay. I would imagine so. Can you turn the camera around and take a picture of yourself? Because, you know, uh, that's, that's what people want to do. No, now. it's from the point of view of the game. Uh, so whatever the point of view of the game is. At least uh, in The Witness it was. I can't imagine. Gordon wants to take selfies in The Witcher. <laughs> I'm just trying to think what happens to basically Instagram once this feature comes out. Well, that's like, what people were doing with uh, Grand Theft Auto V, right? Uh, there was the big yeah, trend. Yeah, there was that selfie mode. In Grand Theft Auto V. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it has to be supported, which is kind of a bummer. That's, that's too bad. I, I would, yeah. would be needed yeah. for just we'll for universally supported. I'm sure we'll see it in every game or X game, uh, like normal. I, I, I assume if it's NVIDIA's usual MO, they'll just hand devs a block of code and go, or a, a hand devs a module and say, put this in your in your game. So uh, I would expect to see it in whatever big budget release NVIDIA is tagged on in the fall. Right. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm supposed to be the one driving this. I'm just having so much fun. I'm just like, we're just like... <laughs> Cruising keep, keep back the train and forth going, like Gordon. a drunk driver. I want to know. So the last last thing, obviously, 1080, 1070, kick ass. Uh, is AMD doing Michael Jordan tears right now? Is that what is this? Where does this leave AMD, man? I mean, uh, this is who like, knows? Hey, who remember, knows? Wait, 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 wait. Remember like two months ago when we were at we were at GDC and we went to the AMD thing and everybody there was like, it's finally AMD's year again. Oh, it's good. I feel like Brown. this happens every time. <laughs> AMD, AMD announces a big thing. Everybody goes, this is it. They're finally back in. And then like a month later, NVIDIA comes around and just like knocks nope. it out of their hand. <laughs> nope. That's what they did last year with the 980 Ti at the exact same price, coincidentally, as the Fury X. <laughs> yeah, they do this every time. And the Titan <laughs> but, X too, right? Uh, Titan X was a grand. I don't think an AMD has introduced anything for a grand in a while. No, but I think I remember they timed it just to mess with AMD. So, Yeah, the 980 Ti came out like a week before the Fury X yeah. or something like that, the announcement. But this year, I mean, they have Polaris coming out, right? They have their own. Uh, part of the reason that uh, the 1080 and the 1070 are so advanced is because it's jumping to from 28 nanometer transistor technology to 16 nanometer transistor technology, which is actually like a two generational leap. And they embraced it's called FinFET manufacturing, which has been Intel CPUs for a while. And all those technolo- technological advancements, AMD's got its own, you know, response to that with the Polaris GPUs, which they first teased months ago. Uh, they haven't announced any cards with it yet, uh, but interestingly, interestingly enough to me, uh, Nvidia came out, you know, and they're like, "Here, here's the new, the new king, the GTX 1080, high end, blah blah blah, so on and so forth." <clears throat> but uh, what AMD's been showing off so far is uh, the lower end stuff. They've been showing off. They were showing off how Polaris compares Watt for Watt versus a GTX 950. 
Right. And uh, Roy yeah, Taylor's they want that League of Legends about- crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a big crowd. Yeah. I'm not even joking. Like the, that that League of Legends crowd. That was what that 950 uh, was aimed at, right? Was that like, hey, you just yeah. need something to run League and Dota, right? right. Uh, yeah, and, it had special software just to make it even run better, specifically yep. in like the yeah. Legends. So what and, did uh, Roy Taylor say? Uh, like uh, Roy Taylor, who is uh, a VP at uh, AMD, I believe. Uh, he's been saying one of the goals with this, their initial Polaris stuff is to expand the total addressable market of graphics cards. So basically, to drive graphics cards even lower prices is the way I interpret that. So who knows what their response is going to be? It kind of seems like NVIDIA is attacking it from the high end, whereas uh, AMD is taking all these technological advancements and approaching it from the low end. But we won't know for sure until they start talking about you know exact graphics cards. Right. And the, but they said they said that uh, the first Polaris GPUs would be mid year. So Computex is in a few weeks. That seems like leaks are saying there's going to be some there. It seems like a logical place. So maybe we'll know sooner than later. Right. And then I, I you know, the vast majority of people, as much as we get all you know, jazz about 1080, 1070, most people are buying low end. These things are all going into laptops and all in ones. There's a huge market there. Actually, still a lot of money. People don't get too excited about it though. Gamers don't anyway. But well, yeah. well, and then, I mean, and then, a lot of- 970 sold really well, so so I don't think Nvidia's approach has been that bad because that mm. that 970 is still I think that's the number one graphics card on on Steam. Yeah, yeah right but, now, hey, you still. know gamers. Every gamer is like, I want this for five dollars. So <laughs> well, yeah, like something like what, like eighty percent of graphics cards cost less than two hundred and fifty bucks or something like right. that. Yeah, eighty percent mm. of them sold. So it's so, interesting. It seems to me like they're approaching it from different angles. I'm curious to see how it goes. So that's where AMD will be, actually. And uh, I'm going to move on, move us. Well, off re- re- real quick, we, before okay. you move on, is are these going to show up in a hardcore hardware? Oh, in the future, I don't Gordon's know. Gordon's flagship video show. I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, uh, Brad's monopolizing. Can I, can I get mine, buddy? Oh, oh man, yeah. this, I'm going to make this is one. pretty hardcore. I'm going to 3D print one. This is and when just uh, paint it silver. This is when the red dot appears on Brad's head, and then he gets <laughs> shot on camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Helicopter comes in, takes that. That's card. why I got Superman to protect me. <laughs> 